Hello, I'm Dr Sarah Bainan and I'm standing here at the Bug Farm, a site that promotes wildlife conservation. But I'm also standing here in the middle of a biodiversity mass extinction and a climate emergency. And I'm not OK with that. Humans are destroying the world around us and current species declines could lead to the extinction of 41% of the world's insect species over the next few decades. But we have the opportunity to change this pattern. We have the opportunity to make a difference locally. 60% of Welsh butterflies are in long-term decline and we wanted to do our bit to make a difference by targeting conservation efforts on one particular rare species, the marsh fritillary. But why concentrate on just one species? Notwithstanding the fact that we want to protect a rare species that has inherent importance in its own right, we're using the marsh fritillary as an indicator species, a species that provides information on the overall condition of the ecosystem and of the other species that call that ecosystem home. As it's extremely sensitive to land use change, if we can get the habitat right for the marsh fritillary, we can get the habitat right for other wildlife too. Therefore, our targeted species conservation is delivered alongside more general habitat conservation, protecting the habitats that our wildlife call home. As a butterfly that's gone extinct in 60% of its former range in the UK over the last 30 years, the marsh fritillary is a species of conservation importance. It's classed as vulnerable in the UK and has been identified as a priority species. It's declined by 79% in terms of occurrence since 1976 and 64% in abundance since just 2005. The marsh fritillary butterfly is also declining in Wales. In 2017, population declines were noted in 13 out of 20 Welsh sites surveyed. The marsh fritillary butterfly used to be found across all of the larger commons of the North West Pembrokeshire Commons Special Area of Conservation, including those across the St David's Peninsula. However, we believe that it went locally extinct on the St David's Peninsula in 2013. The future of the marsh fritillary in Pembrokeshire looks very uncertain and without a dedicated species recovery programme that provides carefully targeted management support, it's likely to be lost from most of its current range. In Wales, the marsh fritillary is associated typically with wet grassland, especially Ross pasture that's dominated by purple moorgrass, but it also occurs in wet slacks on dunes, on fens and on limestone grassland. Eggs are laid from June to early July on the beautiful dusky mauve devil's bit scabious. When they hatch, the caterpillars feed together within a larval web on the scabious. They prefer plants growing in varied vegetation with a sward height of 8 to 25 centimetres in wet habitats, but shorter around 5 to 15 centimetres on dry sites. They feed from July, overwintering in webs close to the ground, usually within a dense tussock, and then pupate in April. Adult butterflies emerge from late May and fly until early July. Marsh fritillaries exist as metapopulations, which are groups of local populations that are connected by occasional dispersal. A marsh fritillary metapopulation requires between 76 and 104 hectares, equivalent to about one square kilometre of suitable habitat for its long-term survival. In the UK, it's a truly terrifying statistic that we've lost 97% of our wildflower meadows since the 1930s. Wildflower-rich lowland and marshy grassland habitats in Wales have declined dramatically in recent decades too. Over 90% of these grassland habitats were destroyed in Wales between the 1930s and the 1990s as we intensified our agricultural production and became tidier in our management of green spaces. The loss of species-rich meadows on farms and the wider environment has pushed many species to exist only on areas managed for conservation. The intensification of land across the St David's Peninsula, including the drainage of fields, the move from haymaking to silage making, and the growing of monocultures of ryegrass for grazing livestock, have all helped to create the bright green fields we know so well. But despite these habitats looking green, they are not environmentally green and are largely barren deserts for wildlife. Marsh fritillary populations are vulnerable both to undergrazing, which leads to the development of rank grasses and scrub which smother the scabious, and overgrazing, particularly by sheep which eat the scabious. Both undergrazing and overgrazing can therefore result in the loss of devil's bit scabious from a site. To allow the scabious and therefore the marsh fritillary to thrive, the habitat needs to be grazed appropriately, ideally by cattle or ponies. On our peninsula, the North West Pembrokeshire Commons Special Area of Conservation is one of the only areas of potential marsh fritillary habitat remaining. 
However, these commons just weren't enough to sustain the metapopulation. And the reason for the local extinction across the commons was most likely undergrazing, leaving behind just small pockets of fragmented good quality habitat. Large swathes of good quality habitat act as habitat corridors, which are vital to enable species like the marsh fritillary to move across the landscape. The habitat corridors that allowed the marsh fritillary to move across the landscape in the past have thus been destroyed, and in places there are complete gaps in suitable habitat. The issue is that when a piece of wildlife habitat becomes isolated, the species that call it home are more vulnerable to extinction events like fire, climate change, pesticide use or invasive species. And if a species becomes extinct in an isolated patch of habitat, it can be almost impossible for it to be recolonised from elsewhere. The habitat essentially becomes an island. When a species becomes extinct in a number of isolated patches of habitat, it can become extinct in an entire area, just in the way that the marsh fritillary has probably gone extinct across the St David's Peninsula. Here at the Bug Farm we were deeply saddened by the local extinction of the marsh fritillary and we wanted to do something about it. The Bug Farm is sandwiched between two areas of the North West Pembrokeshire Common Special Area of Conservation, the St David's Airfield Heaths and the Dowrog Common, both areas where the marsh fritillary was recorded previously. We're extremely lucky that we own, manage or graze enough land across the peninsula to allow us to create at least 40 hectares, that's around 100 acres, of marsh fritillary habitat within a one kilometre radius of previous records. This is 82% of the area of core habitat that's required to support a metapopulation in the short term. So, thanks to Welsh Government's Sustainable Management Scheme, we've been working hard to create habitat and manage the land to hopefully act as a habitat corridor between the wider suitable habitat, known as the functional habitat. But how do you know if you have good quality marsh fritillary habitat? Well, it can be categorised as either good condition, suitable but undergrazed, suitable but overgrazed, suitable sparse, potential rank or not suitable. Therefore, our first job was to identify potential habitats and survey them. We did this by walking W shapes across each field, measuring the height of the vegetation and presence or absence of devil's bit scabious, along with other key plant species such as purple moorgrass and rushes every three strides. These measurements allowed us to categorise each of the project fields in terms of their suitability for the marsh fritillary. All of the survey work was then translated into maps by our local record centre, the West Wales Biodiversity Information Centre. And to have an idea of how much devil's bit scabious was found on the project land initially, we counted the number of scabious plants and recorded at least 43,500 plants. At the start of the project, 17 hectares, around 41% of project land, was either not suitable or the habitat was too rank for the marsh fritillary, with 59%, 24 hectares of habitat classified as suitable, but with either too sparse coverage of devil's bit scabious or the habitat was undergrazed. This suitable habitat was confined to just two sites, one area of common we graze and one area of our own land. Therefore, we needed to manage our habitat to create the 40 hectares of good and suitable condition habitat to support a marsh fritillary metapopulation of which 10 hectares needs to be in good condition. Knowing the challenges we were faced with, it was time to call in help from our wonderful Tidewi herd of Welsh black cattle to bring the habitat back into good condition. In the past, these cattle were bred for beef, but today they're our family. They live with us their whole lives, pottering around and help us out by conservation grazing our wildlife habitats. Their dung provides food for dung insects and their grazing stops scrub encroaching on our wildflower habitats. And their trampling action creates some poaching, helping to manage habitat for rare plants on the farm, like three-lobed water crowfoot and wavy St John's wort. Our horses and goats also help us graze our land, providing even more habitats due to having a preference for different plants than the cattle and having different grazing habits. But one of the main issues preventing optimal grazing was the lack of suitable fencing, meaning that we couldn't graze some areas without our animals escaping. So our fencer Geraint has been busy erecting new fences across the farm, enabling our cattle, goats and horses to get into the rank habitat and graze it down. Another issue with grazing the habitat has been negative interaction between humans, dogs and grazing animals on and around the footpaths through the land. Two sheep were killed by an off-lead dog and our cattle were terrified by humans behaving inappropriately around them. We still don't know exactly what happened, but we've not been able to graze the land properly since as our cattle hear humans, they panic and jump out of fields to get away from them. 
Therefore, as part of this project, we fenced off sections of the footpath to allow cattle, humans and dogs on leads to traverse the land safely and allow our cattle to still work as conservation grazers without being traumatised. We've also provided interpretation on the countryside code and how to act responsibly around farm animals to help prevent situations like this happening elsewhere. These resources are now available on our website and have also been delivered to local schools. To improve the habitat, we also cut back areas of soft rush that would outcompete the scabious and created new wet areas by filling in drainage ditches and digging ponds and scrapes. The next step was to increase the numbers of the marsh fritillary food plant. While one of our sites is full of devil's bit scabious, it's largely absent from most areas. Therefore, in the autumn of 2020, we collected about 160,000 devil's bit scabious seeds and 5,000 of these were grown up into plug plants by Lindsay at the Wildflower Nursery. We were also able to source another 5,000 Welsh source scabious plants from Celtic wildflowers. Marsh fritillary butterflies can also feed on honeysuckle, so we planted over 300 native honeysuckle plants from T. Ross trees around the habitat boundaries. As we're also a research centre, we designed a large research experiment to find out the best method for encouraging scabious for future conservation projects. What's most successful, cost effective and efficient, seeding or planting? To answer the question, we marked out thousands of one metre square plots separated by four metres across the farm and either planted them with five scabious plants or spread a hundred scabious seeds. Half of the plots were strimmed to create bare soil before seeding and the other half were not. We then replicated the experiment at the centre and edges of fields so we could compare how scabious grows in different locations. So what did we find out? Well, as a direct result of the project, almost 15 hectares of project land are now classified as good condition habitat, while almost 5 hectares are classed as suitable undergrazed and almost 14 hectares are suitable but sparse. Just over one hectare that we're grazing down hard to try to reduce soil nutrients due to historical fertiliser use is still classified as suitable but overgrazed. And just over four hectares that we didn't fence during the project or that's taking some time to graze down is still covered in rank vegetation and classified as potential rank habitat. However, by the end of the project, less than two hectares was classified as not suitable and would improve the habitat for the marsh fritillary on 89% of project land in just four months. We're now working to assess the success of the different methods of scabious establishment and hope to host many students over the coming years working with us on the project. We'll continue with the management of our land to benefit the marsh fritillary and we'll plant another 5,000 Devil's Bit Scabious plants in 2021. As a result of this, our target is to be able to classify almost 28 hectares as good condition and around 13 hectares as either suitable but sparse or good condition. If we're able to increase Devil's Bit Scabious numbers on the special area of conservation that we graze, then we have the potential for 100% of project land to be classified as good condition, an area of over 40 hectares, which is 82% of the area required to support a marsh fritillary metapopulation in the short term. As marsh fritillaries require 10 hectares of good condition habitat for their long-term survival, if we meet our target, we will have created well over the quantity of good condition habitat required. However, this habitat must be part of the wider functional habitat of 76 to 104 hectares of suitable and good quality habitat for long-term survival, known as the functional habitat. We're now working with Swansea University and our local partner organisations, as well as private landowners, to survey and map the wider habitat to ensure that there is sufficient functional habitat for a marsh fritillary metapopulation. And we're in this for the long term. We've tasked ourselves with ensuring that we create and maintain at least 10 hectares of good quality habitat here at the Bug Farm and work alongside others to ensure that the wider functional habitat is created, managed and protected for the future. And everyone can get involved. Gardens, window boxes, wild hedgerows, woodlands, rivers, wildflower strips, they all act as habitat corridors. And you can even plant devil's bit scabious in your garden. We don't just want to create the minimum extent of habitat for the marsh fritillary. We want to work with partner organisations and the local community to expand the extent of flower rich habitat across the peninsula to help not just the marsh fritillary butterfly, but other insect pollinators and wildlife more generally too. But the obvious elephant in the room is the marsh fritillary has gone extinct locally. And what if it doesn't return to St David's on its own? Well, we're currently working to decide if collecting caterpillars under licence from existing populations, rearing and breeding them at the bug farm and releasing them is the sensible next step. 
So we need all the help we can get to survey habitats and species across the peninsula because who knows, the marsh fritillary may still be here, hanging on in a remote location. So please do get in touch to help us help nature.